Dude, um, man, I it all started when I when I graduated high school, right? Um, in high school, I wasn't I wasn't really like the you know the fashion type. I mean, I was just going to school, sweats, pants, whatever I got. It's mainly focused on the books, mainly focused on basketball and such. My brother, you know what I'm saying, and I had it on a fire fit in his eyes. I had it on a fire fit. And he was like, yo, bro, why don't you take pictures? Why don't you put it on Instagram? I was like, bro, that's not me. And then he was like, yo, bro, let me take your pictures. You post it on Instagram, and boom, let's see what happens after that. He took my pictures. Um, he, like, he actually directed me how to stand up, how to, you know what I'm saying? I actually showed off my fit. And that picture, it, it blew up. And then now, ever since then, like everybody knew who I was. and. You know, they know I get fly, they know me as the fly guy, so I just continued off that. So, you know, props to my brother X. But if you really want to know, um, like, who got me into the fashion world, um, who even, like, even just the drippy, um, you know, the drippy aspect of it, it was. What's going on, creators? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Artist A. Illin, and I'm here with a special guest, Drippy Mo. I want to know your friend, what's up? What's up, what's up? Drippy Mo. Let the people know where you're from. Hey man, I'm from Harlem, Harlem, New York. Harlem's in the building, you yes, already sir. know. We're going to get into a few dope topics, but before we get into that, what the hell are we wearing today? All right, man, it's your man, Drippy Mo. Um, this is what I got on. I got a Cap USA hat, um, straight from Harlem. You already know, one two fifth. Uh, I got this jacket from, this, I got a leather jacket from Nordstrom. Um, I don't know what's their brand, but just Nordstrom. Um, I got this mohair, I think that's how you pronounce it, mohair uh, sweater vest. I got it from Abba Einstein himself. So, and he dead, so you're not gonna be able to find out where he got it from. It's like shit. Um, I got a, I think this is, uh, I forgot what this is called, actually. But I got that on. Um, I got on some Carhartt pants. Carhartt is mad versatile, so if you ever want, just they go with everything. And then I just got on my Doc Martin loafers. Straight, easy, nothing too, nothing too crazy, just simple. Oh. All right, so today I got on this polo jacket, um, just plain polo jacket, as you can see right here, plain polo sign. Um, I got on some stone-washed gray jeans, no nothing too crazy. Uh, as you can see, these are the Adidas Swarovski collab. You can see you got the Swarovski stones in there. You know, these are low-key slept on. I don't know why, but... um. I copped them. I don't remember how much I paid, but uh, yeah. Also, I'm wearing a polo bucket hat. Uh, you know, little light jewelry. Nothing too crazy. No, um, that's it. People know what's your fashion inspiration? Um, man, as as of right now, I just like I just like to be comfortable, but still flashy. You know what I mean? Still um, be able to show my creative side. Still be able to let people know that you know what I'm saying I'm not a regular person or the way I think it's not regular. I love to think outside of the box, outside of the regular norm. Um, typically nowadays, you know, it's winter time starting to get cold. You know, people are just wearing sweatsuits, you know what I mean? But me, I like to, I like to change it up, you know? Just because the weather changes don't mean that, um, just because the weather changes don't mean that, you know what I mean? Like your, your creativity or whatever it means, like it goes out the door. No, you can still have fun with your, you know, dressing up and still look good and still be comfortable as well. Right now I'm comfortable, I'm chilling right now. Yeah, that's what's up. Word, word, word. Um, when did you realize that you were highly into fashion? When did that become a thing for you? Dude, um, man, I, it all started when I, when I graduated high school, right? Um, in high school, I wasn't, I wasn't really like the, you know, the fashion type. I mean, I was just going to school, sweats, pants, whatever I got. It's mainly focused on the books, mainly focused on basketball mm -hmm. and such. Um, when I graduated high school, my brother, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I had on a fire fit, like I think it was the, the day after graduation, I had on a fire fit in his eyes, I had on a fire fit. Yeah. Um, and he was like, yo bro, why don't you take pictures? Why don't you put it on Instagram? I was like, bro, that's not me, but that's, I leave that to everybody. This is not me, but I just like to go out, you know what I'm saying, do what I do. Yeah. And then he was like, yo bro, let me take your pictures. You post it on Instagram, and boom, let's see what happens after that. He took my pictures. Um, he, like he actually directed me how to stand up, how to, you know what I'm saying? I actually showed off my fit and that picture, it, it blew up. And then now, ever since then, like everybody knew who I was and you know, they knew I get fly. They know me as the fly guy. So I just continued off that. So, you know, props to my brother, X. That's what's up. 
Hence the name Drippy Mo. Hence the name Drippy Mo. When did that right. name come about, though? Like, I, you, you, you know what's crazy? You're actually gonna get an exclusive. All right. Cause all right. I've never ever told anybody where the name Drippy Mo came. All right, here we go. <laughs> so Drippy Mo came actually. That was on a basketball court, right? Um, I like I said, I already kind of created a foundation upon who I am, and you know, me dressing fly and whatnot. You know, um, one day I was playing basketball. Um, in Harlem, actually, yeah. uh, I went seven for seven in three-point line. Like I was, I was, I had a hundred percent field goal. I was not missing at all. Crazy. Literally, like, it worked. Um, from, and then after that, my 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 brother once again, uh, it's actually my my other brother, Serene the God. Um, he actually shout out to Serene. Shout, shout out to Serene. Word. Um, he actually, she actually started saying, "Yo, Mo Drippy, Yo, Mo Drippy," da 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 da, and everybody just started calling me Mo Drippy. All right, but I was like, "Nah, should I Mo Drippy? It, it doesn't flow, it doesn't roll off the tongue like how I want." Of course, wanted, you know? that's kind of fire though. That's kind of you know, Mo Drippy. Mo Drippy. And then I was like, you know what? Let me let me think about it. So. I just, I just changed it up. I said, yo, but how about Drippy Mo? And it's like, ah, Drippy Mo fired. Everybody, so everybody started calling me Drippy Mo. Here I am. I can't, I can't change it even if I wanted to. Cause like, that's just, that's just a staple now of who I am. Word. That's fire though. Cause um, <laughs> when he said it, Mo Drippy like, like you hit everything wet. Pause. Yeah. Like everything wet, you making every shot. Yeah. So he's like, yo, Mo Drippy, bro. Mo yeah. Drippy. Yeah. That's probably, that's how I'm assuming. Yeah, that, that's literally, like that. so that's literally how it went. That's literally yeah. how it went. Yeah, I was make, I was making every shot. And both, and it's like he's one of the best point guards that I've like I've ever played with. He's yeah. one of like he knows like where to where to pass the ball. To me like he knows my spot. Like okay, boom, pass the ball, boom. I'm hitting, the, I'm hitting, the, boom, boom, boom. Say like, yo, Mo Trippy, Mo Trippy, yo. Da, 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 da. But we had a fire ass game, and then everybody just started calling me that, and boom, that's that's what that's, that's what we just had. stuck right there. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Off of basketball, would you look at that? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so all right, so since we into uh, we're talking about. Basketball, so that would assume. Well, I'm, I'm I already know because I'm here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying for the people that don't know, you are what six four. Six four. All right. Yeah. So being that you six four, I have a best friend that's like six five. Okay. Um, he finds it sometimes hard to find clothes. You yeah. know, and to stay fly and stay fresh. Yeah. He, he feels like he's the flyest nigga. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean, I mean shout for out sure. the best. He feel like he's the flyest nigga. For sure. But, um, for sure. Since you're about six four. Yeah. Do you find it also hard to find like the flyest gear for yourself? Um, essentially, not really, no. Uh, reason being is because I guess like my slim body frame, um, I could fit into anything. I can fit into baggy clothes, I can fit into slim fit, I can fit into wide fit, wide leg, I can fit into, like it's, it's really not hard for me. Um, typically my size is in between medium and large. Okay. Um, I, I float between both of the, I float between medium or large, but nah, it's not, it's not really that hard. I actually, I was actually say it's pretty easy just because like everything fits. Um, you just gotta really know like your your pants length or your yeah. your sweater size, and you're good to go. Are you mostly into high fashion or fashion in general? I'm just into fashion in general. I would, what do you what do you classify as high fashion? You talking about like designer wear? High fashion, wear? like designer wear, like you know the, the Louis Vuittons, the Gucci's, you know the thousand dollar um, fits, you know the thousand dollar wear, stuff like that. I'm not really I'm not really into that, bitch. That's I'm, not, I'm not really into that, being that um, I'm not I'm not really into that because I feel like. Well, I mean, I, I guess you could, I guess that's later on throughout the, the uh, interview, but, yeah. or the conversation, but it's not, I'm not really into that. I like, I like simple wear, but it's still flashy. Like, if you actually really want to know how much my clothes cost right now that I'm wearing, but I, I still make it look fly, you'd be really surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people will be surprised at a lot of people's fits on the numbers. Um, some people get it confused with thinking that to be fly, you got to pay, you know, good money. Yeah. Whatever the case, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you got, you can't buy taste like Dame Dash say. You know what I'm saying? Like you either fly, you not. Um, there's a possibility that you know you can make it happen. Like you can, maybe if you got a stylist, bro. Yeah, right? yeah. Like a stylist can help you out. But if you don't technically have style, don't matter how much money you got, it don't work. It ain't gonna work for you. Work. Um, I noticed that you do a lot of lifestyle um content on yeah. your Instagram channel. Mm -hmm. Um, this is what got me interested in knowing what you get into and everything. So I did see a lot of your content. Yeah. Um, it's pretty dope, by the way. Appreciate it. Thank um, you. Yeah. So I was trying to wonder if you do like reviews on clothing or if you're just doing full fledged lifestyle content, like the get ready with me's and stuff like that. What drove you down that road to get you interested in even creating that style? Um, well, to answer your first question, yeah, I, I'm actually, um, 
I'm gonna like start doing reviews um, soon, pretty much. Right now, I'm just kind of taking like a little social media break, mm -hmm. um, but I'm when definitely getting back to it, um, possibly closer to the New Year's and such. Um, but what drove me to start doing the content was basically like, I don't know, like, cause I'm in Soho, like all of my content, like everything is, is, is around Soho. I feel like Soho is really like the eighth wonder of the world. Mm -hmm. Just because that it's really like when you go into Soho, you got every little corner of the world all in one spot. It's really, it's really weird. It's, it's fun, but it's weird. Like you got, it's, it's a lot of things goes on there every single day. Like it's never a dull moment. Um, <laughs> And that's why I, I really want to highlight within my, I really want to highlight that within, you know, my content just yeah. because it's, it's funny, but you know, it's also information. I'm like, I'm showing people, yo, this is how people think da da da, da. And I actually try to highlight, you know, the, the little funny aspects of it. You know what I'm saying, and you know, New York is really New York. New York is really like, New York is a special place. It, it really is, man. You know, it's, it's ever changing. And you're never going to get the same day twice, in my opinion. You know, something's always going on every single day. And that's what I try to highlight in my videos, you know? That's yeah. really what it is. That's what's up. What's your take on streetwear fashion? I think streetwear fashion right now is on the rise. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's making a huge comeback. I felt like designer wear is really not, um, like design, like high fashion, as we mentioned earlier, it's not, it's not, it's not holding up its weight. Um, as much as it used to anymore. Yeah. Everybody like affordable pieces, but they can still look fly. Like, you know, they can still look fly and they still could, you know, um, be different, that is. You know, I feel like everybody's starting to now get in tune that, yo, just wearing designer is not it no more. Streetwear is where it's at. Um, what I also love about streetwear is that, you know, the old um, the old style is, is coming back. Like, um, wide leg pants, um, like how the shorties is now, like they, they wearing um, low rise jeans um, and such, like, you know, that low 2000 Y2K fashion. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, it's all part of streetwear. Um, it's all coming back into style. Uh, and and I, I appreciate that, you know, that whole phase. I, I appreciate that just because as a kid, we never, well, as me, I, I never really experienced that. You know, I just, you know, when we're kids, we don't really care what we wear. You know, essentially, essentially, you know, our parents dress us. Yeah. Now we get to dress ourselves and, they, and get to experience that um, evolution yeah. of clothing that is. So I, I really, pre I like I like where streetwear is at right now. Yeah. yeah. Being that you're not really into the high fashion thing mm -hmm. or whatever, where do you particularly shop within the city? Um, man, this is okay. Okay, now now you're really making me release the gems. Okay, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so if you want to be honest with you, like I said, I shop, I shop at Zara, I shop at Urban Outfitters, mm -hmm. I shop at Uniqlo, I shop at um, Uniqlo's uh, sister store is called uh, GU. Mm -hmm. um, I shop basically uh Nordstrom Nordstrom has some really cool gems shout out to every store you just mentioned <laughs> for sure for sure um I'm really starting to get into I'm, I'm really trying to I'm trying to get into thrifting um I don't want to hop on the, the bandwagon of thrifting because it's, it's really on the rise right now yeah um but the thing is I feel like thrifters they really like they get super lucky because like let's say for example they go into the thrift store and they they find like some super dope piece but when i go into the when i go into the thrift stores i don't find i don't find that same exact you know so i i get pissed off because like yo but where did you find it they say thrift stores i'm going to the thrift stores i don't find it yeah you know it's so crazy it really is crazy so i mean i'm really an online shopper as well i love online shopping so i don't really gotta you know deal with the hassle mm -hmm. the only thing is that you gotta pay shipping fees and taxes and all that which is what i hate but you know i'm really uh Another spot that's cool is Grailed. Grailed is, Grilled, is yeah. really, Grailed is really like my spot for real. Like yeah. I, I find super dope, super vintage pieces. Mm -hmm. um, all sometimes for the, sometimes for half the price that you would get it for retail, basically. Yeah, I was about to ask you, what do you find on Grail? Like I know Grail, I know Grail for being like, um, you know, obviously vintage, old school stuff like North Face, um, yeah. maybe a Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Stuff like that. So what do you even find on Grail? For, like for yourself per se? Man, for me, I, I like to find um, sold out pieces. Uh, you know, I'm really into, like, let's say, for example, uh, Tyler Creator, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he's when some, Sometimes when he drops some stuff, uh, it'd be in past seasons yeah. and it'd be super dope. As, it'd, it'd be super dope as hell, but you're not going to be able to find it when you go into the store. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I find it on Grail. 
and sometimes it's let's say it's used once basically brand new yeah um just buy it and sometimes it's like 50 dollars less than retail okay boom i just got a deal ship it boom sometimes and the crazy thing is too sometimes grill they they um they next day shipping so I, I get it literally within the same week or literally within the next two three days after i purchase it and i'm and i'm you know i'm super appreciative of that yeah you know? that's what's up oh okay see i yeah. never ordered i don't know i don't know i just i'm funny like that but um not nah, grilled girl is where it's at girl is where it's at you gotta you gotta hop on that before before like you know the prices start going up or, yeah because i was looking for um the um the dry loft north face mm. it's an old school big bubble yeah they probably got that over there. I wouldn't be surprised. Now they do. It's oh, just, they do. It's just I didn't want to spend that money. Mm. Now I'm, I don't want to pay that price. I'm, mm. I'm good. But it was still fire. It's just a childhood memory. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got some. I got something similar to that, but it's not that. It's the Himalayan mm. North Face. It's not the same. But um, anybody who knows the dry loaf, you already know what I'm talking about. The uh, what's that? The blue and black, and the yellow and black. Um, Word. Word. Let me just fire. Um. All right, so being that those are the places that you shop at, yeah. what what would be like your top brand right now so far that you, you know usually look forward to buying, if any if any brand? Um, top brand right now, mm -hmm. uh, I, like I said, right now right now is Tyler uh, Tyler just creators um brand is called Golf Wang. Yeah. Um. I, his pieces is just fire as hell. Mm. Um, I feel like it goes with my aesthetic. You know, that's kind of a lot of people call it like you know um, dressing up, but it's really like, like let's say for example, my loafers. Loafers is uh, well, even though I got these from Doc Martin, but you know that whole loafer phase in, in the summertime, I got it from him, and like, I got it from Tyler the Creator. Um, I also cop some dope pieces from there, but as of now, to answer your question, it would be Golf Wang. They got some. Cool ass cardigans, cool ass cardigans on grill, um, and and uh, I like the the, cap, the color assortation um, that he puts on there. You know, makes it look cool. Work. All right, that's what's up. Um, are there any like low key brands that you're interested in, like low key, under the radar brands, no one's really paying attention to, but they're making it come up right now. That's out there that you have your eye on. Yeah. So. Um, I would say there's four. There's four brands that I got in mind that I know that it's gonna make a it's make a, it's gonna make a, a big like it's gonna have a huge impact within yeah. the fashion world. Um, if not already, um, this one is called the GVG Gallery. Um, they have a huge following on um, Instagram right now. They release some dope, comfortable stuff. Um, Next, another one is Vail State. Vail State, they got some cool stuff over there too. I actually, I actually got a um a store. The only thing I don't like about GVG is that they don't have a store. They only have it on Instagram. It's only online. Yeah. But um, Vail State, they have a, a store in in Jersey. I actually wanna um I'm gonna pass by there see what's up. The dope pieces they got. Yeah. Um, another one, it's my man's brand, uh, Prime Star. Prime Star, he got some super dope. Shout out to Prime Star. Yes, sir. Um, he got some super dope pieces, um, especially the pink colorways and the brown colorways. His sweatsuits. Um, and yo, that, that Prime Star, I, I need that. I need a t-shirt. I need a, I need a hat. I need a sweatsuit. All of that. I need, yo, he needs everything. You heard? I need some socks, man. I love, I love representing, um, just representing everybody. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, and the last one is called the Black Sheep. Um, the Black Sheep. I like their hoodies are so tough just because of the um even just even the name the black sheep when you think about it it's like you know it typically it has a, a bad uh connotation but he makes it like he makes it like a, a it's good a dope thing. name though it's for a brand it is oh dope as hell um i believe it's actually from around your block if you want me to be honest with you all right yeah the oh, bronx um yeah his piece is dope as hell every time when he drops it sells out that's how you know it's it's it's, it's really well, yeah. it's if dope. It's, if it's selling out like that, yeah, it's, it's dope. It shit is dope. dope. You know what I'm saying? So and and the thing about this too, he got people from Soho talking about they want his pieces. Word. You know? So yeah, that's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those four right there, those 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 those, those are what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, yeah. All right. Low key brands on the rise coming up. Shout out to every brand he just mentioned. You already know. Like, are you a sneakerhead? Or man, nah? um, man, I'm gonna say yes and no. Right. Okay. Both. I have, I have, I have a wide, um, I have a wide collection of shoes, um, but that was all. That's that was my past phase. I feel like you know when when it comes to fashion, you go into phases. 
right? Just like, just like, not even with me, just with the world um, itself. You go into phases, yeah. right? Summertime is like, man, I, I bring out all, I bring out my whole sneaker collection. I bring out all my Jordans. I bring out all my, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just bring out all my, my Yeezys, all of that. I, mm -hmm. I bring the, I bring them all out. When it comes to winter time, I don't want to mess them up. Mm -hmm. You know, I keep them in the, I keep them in the tuck. I like wearing comfortable shoes. I'm in my loafer phase. Um, like I said, loafers, I'm wearing my Doc Martin loafers right now. And these, I've been, I, I did actually a challenge that I'm going to do a video on later. Um, I wore loafers for one, one week straight just to see um, how versatile it is, just to see how comfortable it is yeah. and see how it will go with all of my fits. And, and you know, I, and it did it very well, you know? Yeah. Like I said, so you just keep it simple. And my, that's the yes aspect. The no aspect is like, as of now, Nike is not really, Nike is not really doing this thing when it comes to um, like sneakers. As of now, it's the sneaker market itself is on a decline. Yeah. Um, that's why I try to, I try to hold on to history as opposed to what the sneaker culture is now. I hold on to the history, what I do have, and not try to move on to. I feel like it would deteriorate, deteriorate my sneaker collection. Mm -hmm. Getting much of the new, um, the newer stuff that they got releasing, I don't really like it. So I just hold on to what I have yeah. and just stick with my loafers. So All that's right. the yes and no. That's interesting. That's an Word. interesting take right there. Do you know the number? Like how many you own? Probably about thirty. 30? Yeah. That's not bad. 30, That's yeah. not bad at all. Do you own any Uptowns? Oh, you talking about um, Air Force Ones? Yeah, Air Force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Air Force? Yeah, of course. How do you feel about Air Force? <sighs> so this is what I think, right? Air Force Ones, they cool and all, but thing about it is it's like, I don't know if you know, what well, uh, I guarantee you probably already know, the leather back in the day used to be top quality as opposed to what they make now. Mm -hmm. What they make now, let's say if I was to go to Foot Locker, right? I was to cop, um, first of all, they've raised the retail prices on Uptowns, which mm -hmm. is crazy. But let's say if I was to cop Air Force Ones right now, Uptowns, whatever you want to call it. I call it, me personally, I call it g Fazos. That's what I grew up on. <laughs> I call it g Fazos. All right. Um, let's say I was to cop g Fazos. One or two wears and it goes out the door. Like yeah. one or two wears is not you. You ain't gonna get that same quality as you know as you once had, which is mm -hmm. it's really unfortunate. But that's just what it is. You yeah. Know? When we had them, in that time, the leather was the leather. It was that leather. The problem was the creasing. It was literally one, one wear. wear. One wear, right. you're done. All whites, you wear them one time. It's a wrap. The next day, it's like you got the wrinkles. It's crazy. Like you show, you show your your toe print and everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's how they were back in the day. Wait, so, wait, wait. And speaking of the price, there was a point in time, I believe it was last year. Shout out to um, Urban Necessities. He did a video talking about how people should um, co uh, what's that? Consign with him, mm -hmm. and he gave them a list of all the sneakers that's selling in his store. And the Air Force One was one of the sneakers. Now, the Air Force One at that time was $90. In his store, the Air Force One is $150. $150 is crazy. Now, this is Vegas, though. Crazy. This is Vegas. I've been in the store in Vegas. The store in Vegas fire. But $150? That was... When I heard that, I said, bro. Hell no. Hell What are we doing right now? That's what, that's what I'm saying. We about, to over, we about to kill Uptowns right now. That's what we doing? <sighs> I would never spend one, bro. Knowing that I used to get them from for ninety dollars, even at hundred, hundred most. Yeah. But knowing I used to get it for that price, yeah. And now you're talking about one fifty. Hell no. Fifty. Hell no. So just think about how many people that heard that probably thought about reselling, which is what happened. Yeah. People started reselling. People started buying them out. There was a point in time when you couldn't buy any uptown, no, no whites, not even the black ones. It's crazy because people would make videos talking about the black uptowns where the um. The, uh, the stepbrother or some shit, or they were used for people who was um, gangsters and wait, robbing wait, shit. Wait, 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 Yo, wait, wait. the black uptowns is over. They trash, da da da, whatever. All of a sudden, niggas started buying them. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Like, wait, 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 wait. Once I seen that, it told me that yo, uptowns is about to get out of hand. And it's gonna get hard to purchase, and that's what happened in the middle of uh, between last year going into the top of this year. I believe that's why the price skyrocketed from mm. ninety to, I think it went from 90 to 100 to now 110. I think it's 110 or 115. Mm -hmm. And the highs that was 100 is like 120, 125. Word. Which to me is, I mean, it is what it is Word. when it comes to that shoe. I noticed that you work at a store called Hype Club NY. Hype Club NY, yes sir. I ain't shout out to Hype Club NY. Shout out to Hype Club, um, I got, I seen one of the videos with 
the OG, shout out to the OG as OG, well. OG, yes sir. <laughs> <laughs> Word, I seen one of the videos that intrigued me about the content that you was doing there. Let the people know a little bit more about that content per se. Okay, so essentially it was around the summertime. Um, what I was doing, I was going around in Washington Square Park. That's my prime spot of content. Um, going around Washington Square Park, asking people about the sneaker culture, asking them would they cop or drop, or just asking people just what music they listen to or what, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Just, I just, and I think uh, Hype Club for, you know, even, give, even giving me the opportunity to be able to do that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, so now today I'm the creative director for Hype Club, it's, that's what I do. Oh, that's what's um, up. I Congratulations. I appreciate that, thank you. Uh, I facilitate their social media, um, post here and there, post OG a lot. Um, and OG is dope. Yeah, I mean he's he's becoming he's becoming a, a huge staple yeah. uh, within the the, sneak, the the whole sneaker world, just because like everybody values his opinion. Everybody, yeah, his knowledge is very yeah, very it's, clean, it's, yeah. it's in depth. You know, um, OG Alex. That's OG Alex. OG that's Alex. His name. Again, um, shout out OG Alex. OG Alex, yes, sir. Um, but yeah, like I said, going around Washington Square, Washington Square Park, mm -hmm. it's filming. I'm actually I'm actually gonna get into it. It's starting to get a little bit colder, but once it when you start like warming up and stuff like that, I, I can wear my, my jacket, I'll be yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but going out there, just filming, just doing, having fun. At the end of the day, it's like having fun, having laughs, getting into it. You did mention that you're not a creative director when it comes to editing their um, social media and everything mm -hmm. and dealing mostly hands-on with the social media. Mm -hmm. Is that strictly because of the lifestyle content that you already create on your own channel? Yes and no, because um, before Hype Club, I already had an identity within myself. You know, everybody already knew me as the um, the drippy guy, the fly guy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But um, I think using Hype Club as a platform, they kind of, you know, they rose me up to where I'm at right now um, in terms of the content, you know, be able to, like I said, it, it helps my page out, helps their page out, helps my brand out, helps their brand out. Um, Everybody loves everybody loves a good laugh, but also everybody loves you know informational stuff, and that's I provide yeah. both. So, so you feel like that's why you were able to get um, that position? All right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I, I told them I think because I've been I've been with um, Hype Club for a year now. Um, I told them when they first hired me, yo, uh, I want to be a content creator. Like I wanted I want to produce content for your store. Yeah. I wanted um, basically because they have a huge they had well. We still have huge potential, but at the time they had huge potential that they weren't, um, they weren't like utilizing. tapped into it. Oh, they yeah. weren't utilizing as well. Yeah. I was like, yo, I can bring you up to like yeah, I. So would, you went straight for it. Yeah, yeah and I told them this is what I want to do. Um, it took some time, took some you know, um, dabbling and the here and there, but I, I got the hang of it, and then we are what we are right now. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So, so. How difficult was it to start creating content um, online for people to see, for people to start seeing? your style and how you even start getting dressed and how you are within fashion. What, how did that feel your first video when you first created? Man, listen, man, if you want me to be honest with you, I, I, had, a, I had a lot of self doubt. Mm -hmm. I didn't have 100% confidence, I didn't. Um, I mean, I still struggle with that today, you know, but I didn't have 100% confidence. Usually um, I would just, walk out the crib and you know I, I I like what I like on I didn't really care about anybody else's opinion I, that's never in question I don't really care about anybody else's opinion upon what I wear mm -hmm. if I like it that's what really matters the most um so and then that's what brought out you know that's what made me technically like live in the moment yeah um but I was hearing everybody yo you should put it out on Instagram da, da, da. like my brother said himself like my brother X said yo put down the internet bro everybody wants to see like your style everybody wants to know who you are and how you get dressed and da 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 it's like, okay, cool. So and then I had to think about the editing as well. How am I gonna edit the videos? Um, and yeah, and then I, I actually learned that. I took I, I asked a lot of people questions. You know, that's how I learned. I love to learn. You know, I asked a lot of people questions and they respond and boom, I, I learned it and I watched YouTube videos. I posted my first video, it went viral mm -hmm. and, and I just kept on going up from there. And from there. Word. That's dope, bro. Cause everyone goes through what you just said. You know what I'm saying? Not feeling like they have the confidence to even think if people would be interested in what they're doing, whether it's positive or negative. Yeah. Um, that's wild for you to feel like that because people's calling you Drippy Mo. You decided to even change your name from Mo Drippy to Drippy Mo because you get fly. You yeah. call yourself the fly guy. Yeah. So right there you had confidence in yourself already, but you didn't have the confidence to let people see you on another aspect, which is on camera. 
I think some people don't realize how difficult that is. From being off camera is easy. You can talk to people, it's, it's way easy to converse, whatever, but when that camera come on, it's a little different because now people go to watch you versus standing in front of you and talking to you. So you want to feel like you presenting the best you in front of everyone to see. Yeah. So I fully understand which, where you're coming from with that. So um, I'm glad that you got over that. The more content you created, the better you got, as we all see, well, as I saw, you know what I'm sure. saying? The better you got and the better you will become in the future and um, as you go forward. Um, so shout out to you on that one. Appreciate it. You were ready. Shout out to Hype Club once again for allowing this That's gentleman Club, to man. get that slot. You know he came in at, came in, pause. He came right at y'all, pause again. He introduced himself to y'all. Don't kill me on these words, all right, y'all? He introduced himself to y'all and showed y'all his confidence within himself. Even when he didn't really feel like he had the confidence, he still allowed y'all to believe in him. And as you can see, it's only going up from here. So shout out to y'all for that. So I think we touched on it more in the beginning, uh, like my like my fashion inspirations. Mm -hmm. um, but that was more for today. I just want to talk more in general. Who are my uh, fashion inspirations? Yeah. Um, as I said, throughout this whole conversation, it was mainly like, uh, I fuck with uh, Tyler, the creator. Um, but if you really want to know, um, like who got me into the fashion world, um, who even like, even just the drippy, um, you know, the drippy aspect of it, it was Gunna. Gunna? Gunna. The rapper? Yes. That's interesting. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, he's actually the inspiration for it. Like, I, I, got, a, I got diamonds on my teeth. Right here. All right. He's the inspiration. The water, the water, you know, because drip, you know, because like, yeah. water drip, whatever, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Gunner was actually the inspiration for me, you know, to, to even, um, you know, to, like I said, to, to get into fashion to where I'm at right now. Yeah. Um, I just, I just love the way, you know, he put that shit on, literally put that shit on. Um, mm -hmm. Coming from Atlanta, um, you know, they got their own sense of style there, but I don't think like, you know, he dresses as if he's from Atlanta. Um, I think it's just more like, like I said, he put that, he literally put that shit on yeah. when it comes to like boots or when it comes to like suit wear or when it comes to like his color assertion or whatever the case may be. It was really gunning for me. Like for me, that's yeah. what, that was like the step, that was like the, 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 um, the stepping stool for me. Okay, now I, I got somebody that I could uh, look up to in, in the fashion world. That's what's you know, up. And essentially people already know him like for his music. Yeah. Um, nowadays, he's, you know, he's receiving slander, you know, people call him a rapper, me personally. Yeah. I don't, I'm not really getting into like rap politics. If I know you for what I know you for, that's what I'm gonna stand on. I'm yeah. gonna, you know what I'm saying? So for that, it was gonna. Um, second is ASAP. ASAP Rocky, to be more specific. ASAP. Where, where, where. <laughs> um, Cause ASAP, you know, I actually, like I said, being, being um, from Harlem, mm -hmm. um, ASAP is from Harlem. You know, I didn't see him a couple of times, um, but where he's at today, it's, it's really like, like he's a huge, he's a huge fashion mogul. Like people know him. You know, he stopped kind of, he stopped making music, because um, he's whatever. Yeah. Um, but he's, you know, he's, um, yeah, definitely, definitely shown light. You know, from Harlem, yeah. um, and that's my inspiration because I come from Harlem. Yeah. You know, I was raised in Harlem. You know, um, another one would be um, Tyler the Creator. Um, Tyler the Creator, like I said, he he's not really, he doesn't really care about like what other people think of him. You know, essentially. He, um, like even his brand, Golf Wang, um, like I said, it, the way he uses colors, the way he, you know, puts that shit on and the way like, you know, yeah, even, in, you know, his, his whole uh, upbringing of like loafers and stuff like that. I never would have wore loafers if it was not for Tyler, the creator. Really? Honestly, yes. Just because t um, loafers to me is like church shoes or like, let's say you go into like a, a dress up event, mm -hmm. but he made it like where you can wear it on the regular. Like you could just wear it on a day to day basis. And I was like, yo, I fuck with that. I like, I like the fact that he's different. And essentially like for me as Drippy Mo, it's like, I, I stand on being different. That's why I name my, that's why literally I, I stand on being different. I don't want to be the same yeah. as the next man, you know? So those three right there, um, are mainly who I, who I look up to. Um, obviously there's a, um, a few honorable, honorable mentions of Lil Yachty. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like everybody's kind of like trying to copy his style, so that's why I kind of left him out. Yeah. Um, 
but those three and plus one, like I, I, I see their style and I try to, you know, mix it my way. Yeah. And then that's what kind of creates the image that I want to create. Yeah. Essentially. That's work. dope. That's dope. That reminds me of like, um, cause they're from your era. So as, as them as um, artists who are also into fashion, um, you get some inspiration from that. That's like from my era, people who grew up like in my time, my time, like a, it passed. But, yeah, word. But you know what I mean? But, um, you know, we had also artists as well that we, that influenced our style in the um, late nineties, and you know, well, mid nineties to the late nineties that also influenced our style as well in the streets. Word. Um, that's pretty dope though. Um, speaking of Tyler, his color palette, I like the color palette of his clothing. Word. Not gonna lie, his word, color word. palette's fire. Um, also, speaking on ASAP Rocky, how do you feel about his collaboration with Puma? I like it, but like I said, Puma, uh, I like his collab with Puma, but I feel like that was just for, just for like money. That wasn't really, um, that was just not really like, you know, as, as a way to, you know, you know, promote himself or like, you know, promote himself within the world, the fashion world is just, I, 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 like I said, it was just for the money. Yeah. Um, I don't really think it was like a more of like a fashion statement, mm -hmm. um, but ASAP Rocky within himself is, is, is who he is. He's cool, you know? Yeah. And I was gonna, actually gonna tap uh, back into what you said upon your, your era in the 90s, I would say. Yeah. Um, I'm actually jealous. If you want me to be honest with you, I'm actually jealous of your generation. Just mm -hmm. because my generation right now, they don't understand uh, the quality of fashion that you guys had in the nineties, bro. That's literally, bro. AI, Jay Z, you had, yeah, Rock Aware, you even a Wu Tang. Keep going, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, had, yeah, had Rock Aware, yeah, had, um, like the Wu Tang, Jay Z, AI, um, mm -hmm. right, the list goes on and on. Literally, yeah, had, bro, yeah, had like, yeah, had MJ. MJ. You know what I'm saying, you know, yeah. so like all of that stuff is like, damn, you know. Y2K literally started literally within, um, Y2K fashion started literally within your era. That's a fact. And, yeah. you know, as a, I wasn't even born then, but even as a kid, you know, in the 2000s, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't have, um, like, I, you know, we're all innocent. You know, as a kid, we're all innocent. We don't really care too much about fashion and stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But to, to be able to experience that, to be able to live through that, I'm saying I, I, I really, I, I actually wish I was born in the 90s so I could be able to live through that. Shout out to the 90s. All my 90s babies. Word, word. Well, technically 80s babies into the 90s. You already know the vibe. Word, word, word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so so yeah, that, yeah. that, Tupac. Y'all fucking had Tupac, my guy, Biggie. You know I'm saying? Say, I'm, you know? I'm like, here you go. Bro, yeah, that's, I'm jealous, bro, because, bro, he, they, he passed by the time I, you know, by the time I was born. So it's like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's, that's, that's tough. Yeah, y'all really had it, because. Who we got now? I mean, like I said, other than the people I just mentioned, but it's yeah, I really had legends. You know, I don't want to do that to your, 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 you know, you know, your, your um, how can I say my era? Your era. <laughs> Who do we have? I mean, no, nah, nah, you know. yeah, but like I said, bro, <laughs> literally, but you gotta understand though, right? I mean, obviously we have Lil Wayne, we have you know, that's my that's my generation. Yeah. But I'm talking about like all of the people I just mentioned earlier upon your generation. My generation, my generation, they follow off of your people. Like you guys led, you guys created um, what we have today. Factual. And me, I'm the type of person, I like to go back to the source. I don't mm -hmm. like the next man. I like to go back to the source. I like to figure out, okay, like where did this person get it from so I could be able to, you know, try to see how I could tweak it on my own. You know what I'm saying? Because essentially, the person that we have today is, is just a, a different, you know, variation of the original. Yeah. Essentially. Pretty much. Um, I, I like the original myself. Like, let's say, for example, even within the music, right? You know, today we have drill music. You know, they sample a lot of old school music. Yeah. I don't listen to that. I listen to the old school music and get that vibe that I want, yeah. you know, that, that the drill music is trying to give. Yeah. You know, so that's just me. That's dope, though, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate for sure, you. For sure, for sure, for um, sure. A lot of us, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak for me. Okay. But I, I'm pretty sure a lot of us, Wish we can go back to that time. Some may not want to go back. Those are some rough times. But <laughs> wish, but all the things you mentioned, wish we can go back to that time because it was a fun time. You know what I'm saying? Even today, when I think about vintage, that's what everybody want. They want, they want the old Levi. They want Jabol. They maybe not a Nietzsche. You know what I'm saying? Or um, uh, 
Uh, not even really feel out like that, but some people fucks with it still. You know what I'm saying? But Adidas, Adidas is old, but they want the old Adidas, the old Nike. You know what I'm saying? They want the old stuff, and that's cool. Just understand where it came from. You know what I'm saying? Like, and put some respect on it, pretty much. You know for what sure, I mean? for sure. The '90s was a hell of a time. Too many fly dudes. Too hey, man, dudes. you know. Tim's like, you bro, forgot, y'all. You forgot Nas. Did you mention Nas? Oh, bro, I'm, I'm not I, a Nas I, I, fan. I didn't, bro. I didn't, but I forgot. You Nas know? was for fly dudes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I, I fuck with, like, even within the, like, he's a legend. Literally, he's a yeah. legend, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it's like, I, y'all had that. Now, the y'all were able to. The was crazy. Huh? The trim set is Yeah, crazy. for sure. Yeah. Like, like, bro, y'all literally, y'all literally, y'all had that. Y'all yeah. was able to live through that, yeah. you know? I wasn't able to live through that, you know? I yeah. <laughs> it's just whatever now, but I mean, yeah. like, you know, damn, like, like that's just Shout me. Shout out to the 90s, shout out to the 80s, into the 90s, you know, shout out to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate that. All, um, damn, that kind of like just, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, bro. For that was sure. crazy. For sure. You mentioned mad shit. Because fashion, it's it's ill how fashion is today. Um, For instance, I don't even think people realize it, bro. Jeans was not always skinny, or not skinny, fitted, but jeans was fitted. Like Levi jeans, dungaree jeans, you know what I'm saying, Jordache back then. That's what dudes was wearing in the 80s, bro. I, I, was, a, I was a kid kid, like a, I was born in 82, you know what I'm saying? So I was a kid. Like when I got old enough to realize these things and see like fashion, bro, like you had, niggas wasn't wearing, the baggy era didn't really come in until like the, the 90s. like. You know what I'm saying? Let's say like 90, 92. You know what I'm saying? You had you had the 80s where um I would say bomber jackets, bomber jackets, Levi jeans, Adidas, Pumas, uh, the Converse's. You know what I'm saying? Nike really wasn't on the rise, rise right away. That came like a, like when Jordan hit. That's when that's when it came. Like 85, 85. That's when it started making an impact. And it wasn't every Nike. It was his sneaker. But, and uh, you had the new Jack Swing um, thing, wearing suits, colorful suits, you know what I mean? Cross colors, um, shit like that, you know what I'm saying? And then you the have like- was big. Yeah, Damn. and you have like the era of, you know, the gangster rap, where, you know, you got, now we entering um, Army Fatigue jackets, Timberlands, you know what I'm saying? Um, Columbia, Columbia jackets. Nordica's always been around. Um, but like it got like more like I won't say techie because techie now, to me is a, a now word. But back then, the Nordicas, the first down, not first downs. Yeah, first downs came like ninety six, ninety seven. First down, the bear coats. Some people probably don't remember those bears. First down, you should look that up. Bears, I probably will. Yeah. First downs. South Pole was like the step brother. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You had um, what other joints you had? It's crazy because all this shit would be like shit I, I know off the rip. Mm. You know, Pele Pele was obviously a Ooh, thing. Pele, bro. Pele Pele, um, bro. Even, bro, I ain't gonna lie. If you want me to be honest with you, within the 2000s, I definitely remember as a kid, bro, all the OGs on the block. They had Pele Pele coats, bro. I always wanted one. I, even now, even, <laughs> bro, I always want them because that's like, that's like OG status, bro. That's like, yo, you got that shit on, bro. You really like, you know what I'm saying? You up there. To have you know a Pele, to have a Pele in my hood, if you had a Pele or an Averex, um, yeah, 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 yeah. He was, he was a getting money. Word, type word, dude. word. You know what I'm saying? I word. was a kid. I mean, I, you know what I'm saying? My parents, you know, not, my parents wasn't giving me no motherfucking Pele Pele or Averex. Hell no. It's been that type of brand. Word. You know what I'm saying? So word. the dudes who did have that, you knew what they were into. Word. You know what I mean? But those were the those were the pieces. Pepe jeans. Yeah. This is uh, what Pele Pele had jeans. Uh, Marcus, Mar- uh, uh, what's his name? Maurice Malone. I don't know if you heard of Maurice Malone. Nah. That's another one you should check out. Look up. He's really good with denim. His denim pieces is crazy. He got some dope, kind of expensive, but um, mm. crazy. Okay. But um, Maurice Malone, you heard of Carl Canard? Nope. Never heard of Carl? All right, Carl Canard, you look, you gotta check out. They actually give you a little list. Word, that, but if anything, bro, like, bro, definitely, definitely Carl. text me for sure. So Drippy Mo, are there any pickups that you have your eyes on that you already purchased anytime during this month or this week? Um, As of now, it's not much of a sleeper, I think it's, it's pretty well known, but it's the, the cactus plant flea market air flea twos, the green ones, not the black ones, the green ones. Um, the one with the big swoosh. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really a big fan of cactus, of CPFM. I love what she does. Um, 
well, that's not her name, but I, I love what the owner does. I forgot her name. I think it's like uh, 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 Sue Lin or something, something like that. Insert. Yeah, insert. <laughs> Definitely insert her name. Um, but y'all know who I'm talking about, though. Uh, I love what she does with her brand. Um, she done came a long way um, within the fashion world. She's definitely a fashion mogul. Um, so everything that, every piece that she puts out, you know, I'm definitely, you know, I, I definitely run to get that. And uh, her latest piece was the Air Fleet 2s, the green version. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking to get, for sure. That's my next cop. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's basically, it? That's, that's basically it as of now. Um, now, I mean, it's not really, I think I'm really just trying to invest in myself. I feel like I got every piece that I want. Yeah. Um, I'm really just trying to invest in myself. Um, I'm definitely going to start. Um, I'm actually going to open up a podcast myself. That's what's up. Um, I'm going to start a podcast myself. Just basically the same questions you asking me. I'm just going to like, you know, answer it, you know, one on one with the world and stuff like that. You know, um, I'm actually, this is exclusive as well. Okay. Um, I'm actually starting up my own uh, my own brand. Ah, so yeah. what's up? I'm actually starting yeah, my own brand. We know we got brand. it. Yeah, we double it back. <laughs> you already know. Double Bro, back. so essentially, so so we talked about it during the the interview, right? I mean, during the conversation, let's just say. Yeah. Um, upon how I was uh, I was I didn't have I wasn't confident, you know, to even start, you know, put my put out my content in the world. Um, I was scared because of the editing aspect, but you know, once I got the groove on, you know. Um, you know everything. You know everything started putting in motion. Yeah. The same way that I was with the, you know, my fashion brand. Um, essentially, like it, it was just. It, I don't. I don't even know how to explain. You know, I don't even know the fact that I don't know where to start. You know, it's kind of the thing that gets me. But once I start and get the ball rolling, the ball rolling, um, I'm able to, you know, do what I need to get done. You know? What do you I'm, think? Maybe I can help you. What do you think you need? What do you think you're looking for to start off with as far as... I right need now? to find a good manufacturer. All right, manufacturer. It, what are you trying to start off with? What's your budget? Let's start with that. What are you willing to spend? To be honest, like I said, between... Like, in terms of, like, in terms of what, though? In terms it's of... It's got to be... Like, budget is going to be... Let's just start the budget with clothing. Like, the garments. Not the other stuff. Just the garments. Be realistic with you. What's your budget that you think you can summon? Probably, probably like close, close between like 500, close to a band. Okay. Right. So that's that's good. It's a good start off point. Now, how? Since you have a, let's say you start with five, right? Five hundred dollars. Are you looking to outsource or are you looking to create your own clothes yourself? Not stitch or or anything like that. I mean, are you looking to? Have someone else screen print your stuff, or are you trying to do it yourself? No, have somebody else do it. So I, I don't know how to do any stuff. of that. So, the trick thing is, you can. You can do it yourself. You don't have to outsource. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. You don't even have to screen print, screen print. And what I mean is, there's a, there's a more efficient way of screen printing without all of the machinery. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's things called like um, screen prints, uh, heat transfers. Mm. Where you could, I'll even give you the website to the spot. You know, you can check them out for yourself. Valid. You know, Appreciate it. Um, ask them to send you some samples and you can test the samples out for yourself and see which one works best for what you're doing. It all also all depends on if you're trying to do just a logo brand or if you're trying to do imagery. You know, these are all, these are questions you got to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to do overall? The first thing is budget. Budget has to be number one so you know exactly what you're spending. That way you know, okay, I know what I'm spending, move on now. Now, am I going to outsource or am I gonna to try to do it myself? For me, I'm, since I'm into that, I do it myself, because I already know how, versus outsourcing. Outsourcing is gonna cost you a little more money because you gotta pay these people to, to do these designs and stuff. Work. Especially screen printing, screen ain't cheap. Um, embroidery, that definitely ain't cheap. So you may want to go into trying to do it yourself at first. This is just a start off point, especially if we're talking about $500 start off point. You also want to start off with the, the lowest amount possible, which is garments. If you're doing t-shirts, which is mostly the most simplest thing, 100 pieces, maybe 50, depending on your colors and depending on exactly what you're trying to do, what you're trying to let the people see. Hoodies, same thing. 
hoodies is gonna be a little more expensive than the, um, the t-shirts, but hoodies sell out, you know, especially a sweatshirt. You would know if you're in the fashion, you should know what pieces is gonna do what, and then it's all depending on um, what's gonna be your logo or design on the garment. Yeah. So once you get those things out of the way, it gets a lot easier. If you separate outsourcing between you doing it and you have a like an idea on what you want, yeah. you can do it with no problem. But if you have like a, a real crazy cryptic design that you may not think you can do yourself, but you came up with it, then that's when you're gonna have to outsource. Mm. Um, if you don't have that just yet, do you have a name? Yeah, so I do. you have a name? Do you yeah. have a, a design for the name yet? Not yet though. I I'm, I'm I have like I have like um, I'm still kind of trying to come up with like the, the logo mm -hmm. of it, um, but I do have a. Yeah, I actually want to hear your, your opinion on the name. This is exclusive, yeah. bro. I just yeah, worry not. Um, it's called bourgeoisie. Bourgeoisie. I like that. Bourgeoisie is. Do you want to? Know, do you know what uh, bourgeoisie? Well, we've. I mean, I've heard people say bourgeoisie before, but. Let the people know. So basically, back in the day, like around, I would say, you know, in in history, uh, like around, say, like the 30s or 40s, I would say, mm -hmm. um, bourgeoisie in, in Europe um, was actually the it was called the middle class. Mm -hmm. um, that was the middle class. That's what you call uh, the bourgeoisie. Um, yeah, and I would just say, but I'm not gonna say, you know, I'm my specific. Uh, clothing is for the middle class because anybody can wear it mm -hmm. um, Just because I, I was born within the, the middle class. So I would say that's just that's just um, You know who that's just whoever could wear it wear it. You know I'm saying you, basically it would be more like a, a Reminder just of more of a reminder which, yeah. where, where you came from and um, where people come from. Yeah, it's relatable. Yeah, and yeah. essentially um, I think that's where also the, the term bougie. Mm -hmm. That's where it came from um, so if you could kind of connect the two, you know, it's okay to be bougie. Like mm -hmm. in my opinion, it's okay to be bougie just because you hold yourself to a specific standard. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the, the idea of my brand. Yeah. You know, you holding yourself to a specific standard, you look and fly and you, you know what I'm saying? Kind of changing the culture. You yeah. cha change, I'm changing the, the fashion culture in terms of like, when you wear my, when you wear my pieces, you don't like you, it, it's okay to step out of your comfort zone. Like when you step out of your comfort zone, you wear my fashion pieces, you, you're you comfortable. Like yeah. you are you don't feel like out of place. You don't feel out of, you know I'm saying? Nah. Yeah. And it's, it works well within every environment. Let's say it works well within the hood. It works well if you were to go to Soho. It works well within if you were to, let's say, go to a, um, like you go out to eat or whatever the case may be. It works mm -hmm. well within, that's what I want to do. That's literally to my brand. That's dope, creator. I like that. Appreciate that's dope. it. Because that's what this is all about, bro. It's all about getting started. And I know it's the hardest thing to do. It was hard for you to start making videos. It's hard for you to get on that camera. Yeah. You was fly already, just not on camera. Now you fly in on camera. In on camera. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. like, you know what I mean? It, it happens to all of us, bro. So now you want to start a brand. Okay, in order that brand to get started, you got to do what? Start. Yeah. That's it, bro. Yeah. It ain't going to be easy, I'm going to tell you right now. Starting a brand is hard. It's hard. But it's not discouraging. You know what I'm saying? If you start small, you got a few pieces, I say, you, this is why I say do it yourself. Make at least five pieces, right? Five. You got one, your brother, your friends, whoever, people that's fly, people you know that get fly, they put that, they put their things on, give it to them. They rock it, people see it, where the mouth starts floating around. Now you just worked on your first piece, you post it on a gram, they post it on a gram, that's how you build a buzz. What you want is an audience, you need that audience, you need to know who's gonna be the ones that's coming to buy your clothes. You know what I'm saying? And again, even though I use the word clothes, that's not what you want them to buy. You want them to buy the culture and you want them to buy the lifestyle because that's what you're selling. You just said, bougie, it's a lifestyle. It's not just clothes. And that's what you want them to know. All right? So whenever you need help on that, bro, just holler at me. I appreciate that. I appreciate I got that, you. but I really appreciate you know that for sure. For sure. Appreciate that. And again, that's for all my subscribers that already know how I, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, all right, so that concludes the content right there. Um, Thank you all for watching this interview. Drippy, I appreciate you. Hey, man. Um, 
before we end it, let the people know where they can find you, all your handles and everything. Hey man, y'all can find me at i.amdrippymo on Instagram, um, TikTok, just Drippy Mo. Um, I'm a cool guy. If y'all see me on the street, a lot of people, they see me on the street, they think I'm like a scared to talk to whatever. Nah, bro, I'm a, <laughs> um, like, bro, if I got my headphones on, you just say, oh, I like your fit or whatever the case may be. Oh, I see you on TikTok. Boom, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give you the time of the day. You know, just don't approach me wrong. That's all. <laughs> um, <laughs> other than that, like I said, I am Drippy Mo, uh, TikTok, Drippy Mo, and just come get fly with me. That's all. Yeah, you are right. All right, guys. Um, Shout out to Face Reed, she wasn't able to be with here with us. Blah, blah, blah. Shout out to Face Reed, she wasn't able to be here with us today, but you already know the bop. Um, you guys already know where to find me, Artist Stay Illin at the YouTube channel, the Arts Museum on Instagram, you guys already know. Um, tell your mother, tell your brother, your father, your sister, whoever needs to know, you already know the vibes. Um, with that being said, uh, oh yeah, like, share, subscribe to the channel. And one more thing, if you like the video, like the video respectfully of course <laughs> see you guys on the next one we out we out